Hi, I'm Randy Robinson. Welcome to Life Today TV. I have Pastor Robert Jeffress, the senior pastor of First Baptist Dallas, and you might know him from the Pathway to Victory radio and television programs. He's also been on here a few times, so we're glad to have him back. Good to see you again. Thanks. Good to be back, Randy. I'm glad you made it over here. You were just on Sean Hannity. That's right. Just yeah. got through taping that and so, uh, airing tonight. You do a lot of that kind of stuff, um, not just with friendly, you know, yeah. Friendly people. But well, I finally moved into friendly territory. I became a Fox News contributor last year, so I well, now you're just do Fox. Yeah. You're official. Yeah. Wow, so no more Bill Maher. <laughs> no more Bill Maher. For a while. Yeah, yeah. For a while. Yeah. That raises an interesting question, I think. Um, this is a kind of a hostile world towards Christianity. Fox News is a little friendlier, friendlier but for a lot of people just living in the world, mm -hmm. we know we're viewed as intolerant, haters, just for believing the Bible. Okay. So we're told to go share the good news, <laughs> and it's like, I'm going to go set myself up to be sued or hated or yeah. ridiculed. What do you tell people in this, this day and age? Well, I tell Christians not to be surprised. To me, the surprising thing has been that our country has tolerated uh, uh, Christianity as long as it has. But I think what we're seeing happening, and I've talked recently about this in some interviews, you hear that there is a rise in the number of atheists, a lessening of people who are attending church, and we see these figures coming out. I don't think that's what's happening. I think what we're seeing is a falling away of cultural Christians. It used to be in this country that to be a good person, you were assumed to be a Christian and that you had to pretend to be a believer and you had to go to church. That no longer is happening. And I think in a way that's a healthy thing. I think what is happening now is we're seeing people being honest about what they believe or they don't believe. But the flip side of that is what you're talking about. I think there's a growing hostility now toward Christians. I mean, just look at what's in the news right now that I was just debating today on Fox about religious liberty laws. I mean, a foundational belief in this country was the free exercise of religion. But today, those who propose laws protecting religious freedom, why they are uh, presented as homophobes, uh, uh, they are castigated, there is a vitriolic reaction against that. I think, and I've written about this in my book, Countdown to the Apocalypse, I think the persecution we're seeing worldwide right now uh, Open Doors USA said the level of persecution among Christians worldwide is the highest it's been in recent memory. We've been largely exempted in our country because of that, yeah. for that, because of the cultural Christianity thing. I think that's falling away. I believe the persecution other believers are facing around the world is coming to our country. Now, that sounds like an apocalyptic doom and gloom. Yeah. But it's really good news for the gospel because the fact is, and you know this from church history, uh, when Christians are pressed, they expand. As Tertullian said, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. And frankly, Randy, we do better when we're in the minority status than when we're in the majority status. Christians have never handled power and influence well. And the growth of the early church, I think, occurred because of the persecution. You know, the Jerusalem, I mean, the Christians in Jerusalem would have stayed right there yeah. if it had not been for the persecution that sent them to Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. Yeah, okay, so let's bring that down a little bit for the guy who gets up and goes to work and uh, he works in a secular organization. Right. And he's trying to share and keep his job at the same time. That's right. How do you, how do you go about doing well, that? Well, I think you tell him, first of all, he needs to be wise. And uh, he also needs to be respectful of the place that he works. You know, he's been hired to do a job and to in any way jeopardize his employer who hired him or to take time away from his work to fulfill his ministry, I don't think is the best thing to do. Uh, so I think he needs to be sure that he's not doing something that is overtly uh, disrespectful to his employer. But we recognize the rights of Christians to share their faith in this world. And I think he should expect uh, that he's going to suffer at some point, suffer rejection from the people he's talking to, and maybe even from his employer. But you know, I think it's important, Randy, that if we're going to suffer, we suffer for righteousness sake and not for our own stupidity. Yeah. And I think a lot of Christians are suffering for stupidity right. rather than true righteousness. Right, right. So can we let our light shine in the public forum, which that's, that's the thing I always hear is, well, 
your religion, that's that's your own private yeah. business. But it, when you get into the public forum, you, yeah. you basically have to throw all your morals out the window, you know, or your message out the window. You don't proselytize mm -hmm. in the public space. It's like, how do you let your light shine? What, what can't I do? What well, that's can I right. say? And, and I'm telling you, that is one of the tenets of secularism today. They don't talk about the freedom of religion. They talk about the freedom of worship. Yeah. And the freedom uh, of worship is, uh, the liberals don't mind you worshiping in your home church or synagogue, but to take your religion and exercise it in the public square, that's well, yeah. that's when all hell breaks loose. Yeah, which and is, that's what this is all about, what's the war that's going on. It's, in it's ironic because our whole country is founded upon very open public uh, worship, if you will, talking about God. I mean. We're talking about books we've written. I've written a book yes. that's all the president's words about acknowledging God and, in our country. And, and this is the president of the country, you know, yes. of the United States of America. Every single president's done it, acknowledging God openly, publicly, asking for his divine, his divine guidance and thanking him for his bounty. I mean, it's, it's enrooted in our country. So it's a little strange, I think, to right now to be seeing this kind of weird shift that says... Yeah, and, and I mean, basically, I think Christians have surrendered the culture. They've surrendered our nation's history so how of do being we take founded it back? as Christian nation. How do we get it back? Well, that's a great question. You know, I hear people say, no, Pastor Jeffers, you need to calm down about all of this. <laughs> you know, we just need to have a revival and we need to pray because after all, in 1 Timothy 2, Paul said, just pray for your leaders. Uh, Jeffers, he didn't say go out and get involved, just pray. And I remind people, the only reason Paul said just to pray for government leaders was because in Paul's day, that's all you could do. Well, they were killing them. <laughs> yeah, well, and you didn't get to vote for the emperor, right, okay? Right, uh, right. But, you know, John Jay, the first chief justice of our Supreme Court, said God has given us the privilege in this Christian nation to select our leaders, yeah. and it is our duty as well as our privilege to select and prefer Christians as our leaders. Yeah. And every time we go into the voting booth, we're either casting a vote for righteousness or for unrighteousness. Now, I don't believe we're going to bring in the second coming by electing the right person to the White House. But I do believe what Proverbs says, that when the godly rule, the people rejoice. And that we ought to prefer and select Christians as our leaders. And I think that gets back to something we've talked about in life today. And that is the dual responsibility of Christians in this world. You know, Jesus called it salt and light. Salt was a preservative. It didn't prevent the decay of meat. It delayed the decay of meat. Eventually, the meat did rot and have to be thrown out. The salt gave the meat a longer shelf life. And in one sense, as Christians, we are to be salt preservatives, trying to prevent the premature collapse of our world so that we have more time to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's one thing. But the other hand is to be light, sharing the gospel with as many people as possible. And, you know, I just tell Christians, we have to learn how to multitask, do more than one thing at the same time. We've not been called to do one thing, Randy. We've been called to do two things. And uh, I think if Christians keep that balance in their perspective, it's not all activism and political involvement, but it's not all evangelism, discipleship. We need to do both. And, uh, you know, if, if the evangelical Christians in this country who profess to be Christians, if they would simply stand up and vote not Republican values or Democrat values, but biblical values, yeah. in the short term, we could turn the course of this nation around. Yeah, yeah, it would have an impact. Last question for you, and I know your answer, but I want to hear you say it. <laughs> <laughs> How important is it for Christians not just to speak Christianity, but to live it, to it? to live out the, the characteristics of Christ to those around us, which we can do without ever saying a word. Oh, I don't think that's important at all. No, of course, <laughs> I think. Uh, absolutely. I mean, that is what the world is looking for, is authentic Christianity. Uh, people who really just don't profess a list of doctrines that they believe, but who are really living the transformed life that Christ called us to live. But you know, the whole tenor of this interview has been about trying to be a witness in a hostile world. This world, I believe, Randy, is gonna be increasingly hostile to the gospel. And I would say to people watching this today, you know, as Peter said in 1 Peter 
four, don't be surprised at the fiery ordeal that's come upon you for your testing. Don't be surprised when you share your faith that you're ridiculed and ostracized. That is the norm. But you know, the Bible also says that life here is very short, but eternity is very long. And uh, Jesus said, don't fear those who can only kill the body, but those who kill the body and the soul, which is God. We live our life for God's approval. He sees and ultimately he rewards. Good words, good words. Okay, Uh, throw out your website so people can (laughs) hear more sermons. Check out all your books. Yeah, our Pathway to Victory website is ptv.org, ptv.org, and you can download free of charge all of the messages from Pathway to Victory. Good stuff. I encourage you to do that and check out Dr. Jefferson when he's on Life Today. That's at lifetoday.org. Thank you so much. Always good to see you. Oh, thanks for having me.